I Love Green Guide Letters is touring live. Brisbane, we are back at the bright side. Saturday afternoon, March 4th. Adelaide, we are at the Adelaide Fringe on Saturday 11th and 18th. And Melbourne International Comedy Festival, we have six shows throughout the fest. Three late night shows Thursday night and three Saturday afternoon shows at 4 o'clock. Tickets are on sale at ilovegreenguideletters.com. Hey you guys, before we get the show going proper, the Melbourne International Comedy Festival begins this week and I would love for you to come out to see my new stand-up show, Steel Saunders the Enthusiast. It is just on from Tuesdays to Saturdays, 7pm at Fort Delta, which is directly opposite the Melbourne Town Hall and I'm only doing it for the first two weeks of festival And man, it would be good to have a first weekend packed out with letter lovers. And of course, we have live I Love Green Guide Letters podcasts. A little bit different this year. We're doing Thursday night late shows at 11 p.m., which... I cannot wait for. I've ne- we've never done a green guide at night before, let alone 11 p.m. So it should get wild. And then the traditional 4 p.m. afternoon show, Saturday afternoon, and that is at the joint. The late shows are upstairs at the Exford, and there's only three shows of each. There'll be no shows over the Easter weekend, as I will be in America for about 10 days during the festival. Hence why you've got to get to the stand-up show quick, because after I leave, I can't do any when I get back. Your support is so appreciated, and... You're going to have a really good time. The stand-up show has come together really well. It's about all the things I love. And the I Love Gringo Letter podcasts live are always super fun. And we'll have amazing guests, hilarious comedians. And as well as that, I am doing three Steel Wars live podcasts before the Saturday afternoon I Love Green Guide Letters. There is discounted season passes if you want to come to the Saturday shows or the Thursday night shows or come to everything, including the stand-up shows. Check the ticket info at I Love Green Guide Letters or comedyfestival.com.au. I so appreciate it. And I cannot wait to see you at the Comedy Festival. And now, on with the show. If you need me now. Hey, you guys. Welcome to I Love Green Guide Letters, the podcast where we talk about the letters to the age, newspapers, television, and radio lift out the Green Guide. I am Steel Saunders, and I do love those Green Guide Letters. And I, I think we've dulled the Adelaide audience into a comfortable malaise with uh, Peter Satara's beautiful power ballad, Please Don't Go. I just hope he can reconnect with Chicago one more time. And uh, <laughs> I just need music that matches my haircut, all right? So just <laughs> chill out. I saw Chicago at the Hollywood Bowl last year on July 4th, and it was... It was amazing. I was jealous of me. I was having so much fun. I was, I was thrilled. It was great. That's what Chicago. That's what the kids listen to, isn't it? Uh, I've had a, a great time in Adelaide. Thanks so much for coming out to the show. I really appreciate it. And the podcast, it's been super fun. We went down today, me and, and, and um, Adelaide's own James Fosdyke, everyone. And um, thank you, one person. And it wasn't even his wife. That's very sad. 
Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> and we went down to get a photo in the food court where George Lucas got the photo eating the noodles, right? And we, we had to move tables to make sure it was all perfect. And uh, we had the best time. But then we were coming back and we were walking through Twin Lane. There's a lane called Twin Lane. Is that a favourite? Is that a lane? No? Okay. But we were walking through Twin Lane and I was just making dumb jokes. And I said to Fosdyke, ah, oh, where's the other Twin Lane? And there just somehow appeared an Adelaide council worker just materialised. He was somehow just standing next to us and he goes, yeah, mate, it's just over there, the other one. <laughs> and then me and Fosdyke just burst into tears laughing and he goes, what? So what, there's two twin... Oh, <laughs> I've lived here all my life and I never knew. <laughs> it was great. I've totally changed Adelaide for one guy now. That's great. How about we bring up our letter lovers, you guys? <laughs> Welcome Adelaide's own, the amazing artist, James Wozdyke! <laughs> Making his live I Love Green Guy Letters debut, it's Peter Jones! <laughs> and finally, we get to find out who the mystery man was between all those censored stories. It's Mr Black Will Anderson! Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Adelaide. Thank you, Steele. Um, I thought a guy who has a podcast about Star Wars and a guy who has a podcast about letters to the Age Newspapers TV Guide could never sound any more nerdy. And then you said the sentence, so I saw Chicago at the Hollywood Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> as, as I was saying it, I felt like I was just setting up a T-ball set for Will Anderson. <laughs> I, I feel like you were just like, no, I feel like my stuff's too relatable. <laughs> <laughs> They're so good. <laughs> All right, mate. <laughs> Dude, the Karate Kid theme, the love theme from Karate Kid. Okay, okay, you know there's other music than music that's from movies, right? <laughs> <laughs> John Williams? Yeah, okay, all right, calm down. <sighs> Fucking Triple J, I was old. <laughs> <laughs> It's a long time ago, mate, I've had heaps more jobs since then. <laughs> Sorry not to rub it in. Okay. But I... Uh... <laughs> 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 how are you, Pete? Do you dare talk in this? Oh, I don't dare talk. I'm not going to get in. But, uh, yeah, so why are you into Chicago now? Did you only just watch The Karate Kid? No, I always loved them, right? And then on the yeah. way home from... Oh, no, like, but I didn't know I did. Like, I just hear the songs and yeah. then go, oh, that's, that's a pretty sweet 80s power ballad. Do yeah. you know what I mean? And then one... It was that, just a, the best of Chicago you've been listening to? <laughs> Don't hang shit of my lifestyle. Okay. <laughs> You're a guest on this program. And I'm so sorry. I was coming home from a live podcast one night. My friend was driving me home and I'd had a few beers and we will listen to Smooth where it's, it's so good. Cameron Daddo puts the entire nation in a trance. All right, you're going to walk into the kitchen, get a tea bag, chamomile, dip it. It's that amazing. And then it's really fucking creepy coming from you still. <laughs> <laughs> we've, had a, well, we've had a very bonding week. I've been, I've been sleeping in James's bizarre studio with all the posters. I've been dreaming of, of cocks. It's, it's very strange. And tea bags. And yeah, <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's very strange. I, I heard one of the songs and I was just like, fuck, that's a good song. That's just like, yeah, I feel alive. And they didn't back <laughs> announce it, right? And then on that day, I went to um, Sydney to interview Harrison Ford. So they invited me into Studio 10 that morning because BB-8 was going to be on the show, the robot from the new um, Star Wars movie. And so I'm sitting there. <laughs> Hang on. What, as one of the panellists? <laughs> Still the make more sense now. than fucking Joe Hildebrand. Oh. <laughs> God, if you thought Ida hated me. <laughs> so I'm there to meet BB-8 and I'm just like, this is the best day ever. And I'm standing, they have a coffee shop on Studio 10 that you can get coffee from and it's actually real. So it's amazing. So I just, I'm constantly getting coffee. And they said, sit there and then when we go to ad, you can like pretend you're drinking coffee. I'm like, fucking pretend, Jesus Christ. I'm the Bart Freebound of coffee consumption. What I love the most is you're so excited about real coffee when you're about to make a fake robot. 
<laughs> oh, sorry. Is that, did you not know? <laughs> Spoiler alert, but you're about to meet a fucking vacuum they put a voice in. <laughs> a celebrity vacuum. <laughs> he knows Daisy Ridley. <laughs> You might like him. He's got a little lighter that pops out. That's handy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so I'm standing there in the coffee shop, standing next to Angela Bishop, which is kind of weird, and then they introduce this next musical guest and they go through all the songs that he played, he's, he's played and been known for, and I'm like, oh, fuck, that's that song. Oh, fuck, that song. That song. Suddenly. Oh, my God. Theme song from Karate Kid. And they bring <laughs> out Peter Cetera, and I'm just like... The guy, I actually had gone into record shops and just like on, hey, what's that early 80s band that just plays like they mean it? And they're like... (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Does it not say anything to you that musical professionals never said the band Chicago? (laughs) 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 Fuck off, man. I saw them at the Hollywood Bowl and they meant it, right? (laughs) They had their best sports jackets on, their saxes out... (laughs) <laughs> I, also, I love the uh, what's in the mind of the, the lead singer from a band who can play the Hollywood Bowl when he has to do Studio Fucking Ten. <laughs> oh no, he wasn't there. He split from the band. Oh, okay. Yeah, and we hope one day that they'll reconnect. Oh, okay. Well, now I'm more intrigued. <laughs> <laughs> Again, Pete, how are you? Oh, I'm well. Thank you for asking. <laughs> I'm still baffled. So you saw, so that's the lead singer songwriter of Chicago, and he wasn't in the version of Chicago you saw live. Yeah, I know. I did. It <laughs> did hurt me a little bit. So you that... saw a Chicago cover band, <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, Holy you know fuck. What? That said, <laughs> you are talking to someone that is impressed by a celebrity vacuum. Yeah, so... That is true. That is true. Oh, I love that so much. I honestly felt like we were in a courtroom drama. <laughs> And I was the lead prosecutor, <laughs> and I'd done with my bits, and I sat back down, and you got like, I got one more thing. <laughs> oh, that was the best. <laughs> On this episode of Cunt Court. <laughs> dun dun. <laughs> <laughs> But we've had a, a, a fantastic week. Have you had fun having me? Is the first time ever you've drawn something for someone and they've been sitting behind you it giving you tips? It was awful. <laughs> it was awful. Genuinely awful. Oh. Yeah. No, like having your boss... But I wouldn't want Will behind me as I draw for Will. Because just in case Will goes, oh, could you move that bit? I'd just go, fuck off. Like, <laughs> and I had you, and I'm just sitting there just going, I'm fucking... I haven't told Steel, but I'm on holidays. And he's like, got a bit of work for you. And I'm like, oh, I just want to draw this other thing. And <laughs> he's like, Star Wars. And I'm like, yeah. And, and then I start drawing it. And I, I look around and the look on Steele's face, like, was, was priceless. You were so fucking happy. <laughs> like, you were just filled with joy. And that gave me the energy to finish it. Hear that, Will? Priceless. He's not going to charge me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I, I love that you're boasting about the fact that you don't pay your employees properly. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a big future in politics. Uh, <laughs> well, I recently gave him a raise. He did. I'm full <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Your Honour. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I want to come to my defence, but it's not funny. So I'm a fucking scab, you guys. No, Steel, it was fun. Like I, I just, I just know how much joy you got out of it. But you're walking, you're walking into my my place. That's my job area where I want to be left the fuck alone and and do what I want to do. We should have had this talk at the start of last week. <laughs> No, I feel like that would have been a terrible time for your hopes of accommodation. (laughs) I think you've really done well out of the fact that he's buried this deep inside and saved it until today. Yeah. And I gave you you a substitute cat as well. I just, there you go. Pat that, you know. It's orange. If you squint and punch mine in the face, it kind of looks like... (laughs) (laughs) And my knuckles are barely healed. That's... (laughs) But it is 
But it's, it's like the Fosdike family is this delightful little family with a little boy who's just a joy and, you know, they're just living their suburban lives, having a great time. And then you hear conversations like this. Fosdike had his notepad out this morning and uh, Amy said, why have you got that? And he goes, I'm going to draw some dicks to hand out to the audience. <laughs> and Amy goes, that's nice, honey. <laughs> Who wants a dick? <laughs> Sorry, I'm allergic to pictures of cocks. I um, have a really bad allergy. <laughs> oh my got, god, I this is you, like this I got is you like your very own dick. You remember your birthday? <laughs> I gave you a dick for your birthday. You did. I did. I give I give all my friends birthday dicks in their birthday cards, and and like the last one was misogynist. Like, <laughs> the the one I drew for you was was essentially. A Will Anderson dick, like it had your hair cut around the pubes. <laughs> and, shaved balls. and to be honest, it looked fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> and then I one day I'm thinking about trying it out myself as a matching set. You know, I just had to quickly explain to you that oh, I do this for all my friends, yeah. not just you. Like I'm not just drawing your penis and giving it to you. Like here's what I think your penis looks like. Did you give him the friends. raise before or after the penis drawing? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be honest Sweet with you, here's, here's the thing. Like, I'd rather, if you are drawing pictures of my dick, that you show them to me rather than just Keep them. the idea that you're sitting around in your little wank cave drawing pictures of my cock. I sticking. draw all what, my why friends. Why are all these posters stuck to this wall? And they're all of you too. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> That's why I didn't want to take you to the studio this year. Like, yep. like I, Will came around to the studio last year, but this year I put up all my new posters up and I've just been working for Will. So all the stuff I'm really proud of is just Will and I'm just like, I don't want to bring him back to see <laughs> this. It looks like some kind of paid stalker kind of, <laughs> kind of situation. Really fucking creepy. Yeah. So I'll just sit there in my little hole and draw your dick instead. <laughs> <laughs> I often get asked at the end of things, like, you know, if you want, like, so there'll be some giant poster they make for a show or there'll be, like, you know, at one stage for some special we filmed, they had the giant wheel in giant letters and they were just, like, afterwards, they were like, oh, do you want these letters? And I'm like, yeah, where? Where am I going to put those <laughs> in my house? Like, where is there any situation where, even as a joke, I can just have my giant letters spelling yeah, out my name? Giant posters too for the Herald Sun. You had to burst out of it. I got offered that, and I was just like, I don't know where to put like a, a twenty meter huge fucking wheel poster. No, you should have just got on the phone to Ronnie, mate. Where do you keep your fucking letters? <laughs> <laughs> got room for three more? Uh, Ronnie's got alphabet storage somewhere. <laughs> James does all this stuff for, for Tofop, this really cool co comic that comes out. Is it every week? Does it come out, James? Every For two, yeah, fortnightly, right? Yeah, is it? Ish? Kind of. Kind of? You give me a bit too much leeway, so I take my time sometimes. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, look, again, than... what you're learning about me is I'm not a very interactive person. <laughs> a lot of this is a mystery to me, <laughs> but okay. uh, it's like based on episodes of the podcast and then James kind of draws his own sort of interpretation or vision or, well, maybe you could explain it better. But it's Well, I, yeah, you guys go, we need a poster for this. I do the poster and then I go, do they like it? Oh, they've posted up on Facebook and they've said they like it, so they like it. <laughs> We're not very hands-on, yeah, is yeah. what I'm saying. <laughs> so, so when when Will didn't retweet the picture of his dick, you took that as a negative sign. That was private. <laughs> Catch me in your DMs, bro. Um, yeah. But the, my favourite thing that he showed me that he did for you, I said, "What is that?" Because I couldn't. I was, I was sitting on the couch away from the screen. And he said it to me like I was a fucking idiot for not knowing. He goes, oh, that's Daryl Summers in his undies about to fuck Will with a gold Logie. <laughs> and I'm like, what age recommendation would you put on this comic? That Look, was, um, the I said... first one. Yeah, I said something... Um, well, here's the thing. I said, what, I, said, I said one of those things that I never thought I'd have to back up. That's what I said. Oh, here, we uh, here we are. Because I barrack for a football team called the Western Bulldogs and uh, they have just been historic, historically terrible at football for like forever. So I once said on the podcast that I would let Daryl Summers fuck me up the ass with a gold logie if the Bulldogs won the premiership. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes you, we put out episodes and I don't get feedback, but after the Bulldogs won Are the premiership... Are we going to bring him out? Yeah. Yeah. Daryl, 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 Daryl. <laughs> 
Oh, that would make it like, hey, hey, it's Saturday, because we've already got the stoner Andrew Fife over here in the corner. Uh, let me just draw a turban on yeah. this. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that good enough? That? It's a little turban. Uh, I'm not racist very often, so I've got to try harder, I guess. My other Channel th- my leak. It's been a dick-heavy a dick heavy week for me. I don't normally talk <laughs> about dicks this much. But he did text... He texted me or sent me a DM or something, made an alert come up <laughs> on my phone that read, Did you see my dick? No, it's I now online. You. you should have a notification. <laughs> <laughs> and then I click on it and it's Fosdyke... It's a body, right, of Fosdyke. Every limb is a dick... But then his dick is his face. <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck am I meant to do with this for the rest of my life? And that's, that's why I love you, Steak, because I get to see these reactions in real life. And it was beautiful, because I just walked into the kitchen, you're sitting there, and I'm just like, have you seen my dick? And, and you're just like, what? And I go, oh, you'll get a notification about it. And then I just look over, and he's just like, oh! Oh! <laughs> I don't think you favourited it or retweeted it or anything. (laughs) But it was enough for me. I wish I could get that reaction from everyone that looks at it and I get a little video screen of of everyone's disgust. (laughs) A little reaction YouTube. Uh, How about, guys? How about we love some letters? All right. All right. I've I've, I've dug into some classics. I'm not sure if you've ever had to deal with these ones before, Will. Okay. Um, This one is from August 18, 2014. Oh, yeah, yeah, we've done this one. (laughs) <laughs> I know the dates of all of the letters about me in the, no. <laughs> Did everyone in the audience get to enjoy the one and a half seconds Where I thought he actually knew that we'd done this one I was like <laughs> He's a real fan 18th of August 2014 Ballard Channeling Anderson <laughs> Who else got the impression that Tom Ballard on Reality Check has swallowed a Will Anderson pill? That's from Penny Hoare in Lawn. So my question for you, Will, is do I have pills and am I sharing them? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, You have done this letter. Now I am going to go back on the impressing you. You did do this in an episode you had Tom Ballard on. Yeah, but not for you. But he made jokes about me and my pill usage in that episode and we are currently in a legal battle and I cannot... (laughs) I cannot actually talk about it for legal reasons. In fact, at the moment, because uh, we are... It turns out he did take my pills and that's why he's having such great success now. He's really... I mean, he got five stars in the advertiser and I only got four and a half, so we're going through some negotiation to um, make, get me one of those stars back. So, uh, the pupil has outdone the master! <laughs> Peter, do you know what's in a Will Anderson pill? And um, are you experienced? I only have one question. Was This, this is 2014. Mm-hmm. I, why don't I know what reality check is? That wasn't long ago. What's reality oh, check? Oh, good burn. No, 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 I, I'm like, no, this wasn't a burn. I genuinely don't know what it is. Yeah, no, again, a good burn. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I've I'm never serious. Heard I've never of heard it. of this show. And who is Tom Ballard? If I, <laughs> this, fa- this show must have been a, such a failure for me to have no memory of it whatsoever. I'm serious. My name is I'm Peter not, Jones. <laughs> I'm not trying to insult anybody. I just don't know who these people Fuck are. Fuck you, Tom Ballard! <laughs> Again, I can't comment because of the legal <laughs> battle, but I... <laughs> it, uh, Tom had a show that it was um, made by the same people who made Gruen, and oh. it was kind of a Gruen-ish show about reality television. Oh, yes, I remember it fondly. And yep. it, yeah, no, <laughs> it didn't go as well as it could have, but it was no fault of Tom's, who was brilliant hosting it. <laughs> wow. Sick out, of, out of court settlement. <laughs> out of court settlement. So, Tom, <laughs> if you've heard that, we're even. Give me a fucking star. <laughs> You don't need a star. You're still young. You have stars in your future. <laughs> I feel like I'm talking straight to him. Like I just, I could call him. I have his number. But Ooh. yeah, no. ask, ask him if he's got anywhere to keep your letters. <laughs> Not green guide ones. Not green guide ones. Other ones. This one, another one that uh, we have done. I'm, I'm interested in uh, Will's retort to this. This is from oh. September 28th, 2016. Not a good night from him. 
When the late Ronnie Barker's birthday last Sunday was remembered on 3AW overnight, I was filled with a sense of sadness. Not just because since 2005 he is no longer with us, but also because ABC comedy nowadays is largely neither self-deprecating nor understated. Are we... All we get are the smug, in-your-face offerings of Gruen and the likes of Charlie Pickering. And that is from Peter Drum, Coburg. And as an extra slight, Peter didn't mention Tom Ballard with Reality Check. (laughs) Yeah, well, that was only a brief moment where he had to put up with that. So... (laughs) You know, but no, we have a show that is critical of things and often when you are critical of things, people think... If you make judgments, people always... The smug is the thing that they tend to say. But, um, you know, we're only on ten weeks a year. I feel like it's just not enough to complain about, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, if you don't like us, we're almost fucking done. I don't want to do it. It's but fine. You, but I'm you, like the people who write in going, I want less will on TV. I'm like, that's what I say to Kev all the fucking time. <laughs> like, how can I have the same money but be on TV less? That is also what I think. I'm with you, Peter fucking Trump. <laughs> You're a drumite. I am. Do you think because you're only on 10 weeks, that's why you always get letters? Because the letter writers sort of think, well, we got rid of him last year. <laughs> you know what? I, I do sometimes just wish that I could like, you know, know their individual things because I don't want to respond publicly because it's unfair, right? Like, you know, like I have a bigger following than probably he does and it's means for me to kind of... <laughs> I mean, I'm guessing. I don't want to prejudge, but uh, <laughs> might be an alternative fact. Who knows? Might, might have a big online following. <laughs> He's got that TV show, The Drum, right? (laughs) That's why he's so angry. He wants that to be on (laughs) later on in the day. I would like to ring them just in between and go, it's okay, it's all right, you know, it's fine. Or sometimes I'd like to just go, I'm going to sign for two more seasons. (laughs) (laughs) Fuck you, I might do 20 episodes next year. A very special movie-length episode, Drumsy. Mate, if if I ask for an hour, they'll give us a fucking hour. What are they going to do? We put on another episode of Reality Check. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, I even forgot the name of it when I was doing that (laughs) first. Poor Tom Ballard's having a Will Anderson pill come down right now. Yeah, this is Suicide Tuesday of the Will Anderson <laughs> film. <laughs> I once had a, uh, a big night out on a New Year's Eve and I'm not sure if I've, I don't think I've said this in the podcast before. I, w- I was courting my wife and I wasn't doing either a good job of it and it was a couple of days after New Year's Eve and I was on the phone to someone out the front of the jam factory and uh, I was on the phone to someone who said, oh, just, I'm just bumming out, I'm just having the worst time, not feeling it. And it's like, oh, you're having the terrible Tuesdays. And I'm like, what the fuck's that? And I'm like, oh, well, a couple of days after you have a big night, when all the chemicals leave your body, you get really depressed. Fuck yes. There's a reason why I feel so bad. And the rest of the year was fucking great. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It actually relates to the TV guy. You, you might not be uh, old enough to know this, but there was a TV <laughs> show called Changi. Do you remember the TV yeah, show yeah, Changi? Yeah. Uh, sort of John mini-series. Doyle from Roy and HG wrote it and it was kind of obviously set in the prison camps of Changi but it also was a musical and it had all these great young Australian actors in it but it was also kind of, it was an ABC thing so it was very emotionally wrought, this show, right? A TV show musical set in a prison camp? Yeah, in Changi and written Whoa. by John Doyle from Roy and HG. It's a fucking brilliant award-winning show, right? And it used to be on a Sunday night on the ABC and it was when I was first at Triple J. So, it, look... To be honest, like, when you do breakfast radio on a youth radio station, like, you get tired about midday on a Friday, so you've got two options. You could go to sleep or don't go to sleep again until Monday. So, (laughs) (laughs) sometimes I took option B. So, I... (laughs) And had a lot of great times. But Changi would be on a Sunday night, but because I was starting at, like, midday on a Friday, that's my Tuesday in that rotation of what your weekend is. So, I would get back to Sydney, because I'd normally been out in Melbourne with my friends, I just moved and then I would sit alone in my apartment and just watch the TV show Changi and just fucking cry for an (laughs) hour in a way that I haven't cried since. It was like, you know, like in therapy you've had a breakthrough fucking crying like whole body just like what did these young people go through (laughs) and this is a great song and it's the guy from Ryan HG this is a real twist for him this is great (laughs) Anyway, lovely days, good days. 
never wrote a letter to the green guy about it. <laughs> oh, what? Hey, not? dear green guy, this is great if you've been off your head on pills for two days and it's come down. Have <laughs> you ever taken one of those Will Anderson pills? <laughs> Shaggy's the show for you. <laughs> I think back then they were the Carl Williams pills in my era. <laughs> <laughs> they were. That's, that was the weirdest yeah. thing when you watched Underbelly. Yeah. People were getting really upset because he was making them too strong, yeah. and all the other drug runners were like, "Oh, his product's too good." And it was just sort of like you, you put the time together and go, "Yeah, they were good back yeah. then." <laughs> <laughs> that was it. That was like that time. That was the, that exact same time. Yeah, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> this isn't like this isn't. I love pills from the early two thousands. <laughs> yeah. It's Changi Cast. Yeah. What's this person got to say about red Mitsubishi? <laughs> How are the pictures going there, Foz? I've drawn uh, six, seven dicks, seven, eight. Is that not enough? No. <laughs> you want more? All right, I'll give you more. <laughs> Does that one have legs? That one's got, that, that one's that, got turban. That, that one's, one's got, got a turban. sunglass. That one's a dinosaur dick. Oh, it's a dinosaur dick. <laughs> that one's a cool dick, because he's wearing sunglasses. A cool dick? A <laughs> cool dick. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it is funny. Yeah. <laughs> Shouldn't he just have like one frame, like a? Don't like tell me what to fucking do, Saunders. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Do you want to go and stand behind him? <laughs> just a, a flashback to it, because I was lying on this couch and I just look up once in a while, and I'm like, "You better make that lightsaber green, mate." <laughs> <laughs> So I'm not finished. <laughs> yeah, I know you haven't made it green. <laughs> We had fun. We had fun. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I want to read this one out because it's f from one of our uh, favourite letter writers, and it's just it's just a great letter. It's just it's not it's not often that we get one where I'm just like, yeah, maybe you are living a good life. That's great. This one's called French Letter. <clears throat> Forget Scandy Noir. French crime drama Spiral, SBS, has been a brilliant series. The police and the judiciary appear equally corrupt in a sleazy world far removed from Paris of the tourists. It's a nail-biting drama and I can't wait for the next episodes. And that is from Helen Scheller, Vanilla. Helen Scheller from <laughs> So you read Benella. that whole letter because of Helen Scheller Benella. <laughs> oh, no, we, always, we always read out the Helen Scheller Benella But letters. you did, yeah, Helen that's Sch right, just for that reason. It doesn't no. matter what shit she's writing in about SBS fucking French crime dramas. You're just like, Helen because, Scheller Benella, let's get her in. Just because she didn't mention your little program that's on 10 weeks <laughs> a year, it doesn't matter. It's a great letter. Don't you think it's a positive letter? Don't you think this is the sort of letter that can just put this podcast out of production? <laughs> I mean, yeah, because it's yeah. fucking boring. <laughs> it's nothing to talk about. It'll, put you, it'll shut your podcast down. That's actually been sent by a guy from another podcast to fuck up your podcast. That's, there is no Helen Scheller in Vanilla. That is, that is classic be? Tommy Dasselo. That's who that is. He's seen your fucking numbers. He wants to shut this shit down. He's already good at making up names. He made up his stage name. So now he's making up Helen Scheller Vanilla and trying to bring you down with boring. Boring letters about French crime dramas that no one can riff on. Over to you, second chair. <laughs> <laughs> I have one question. What's Spiral? <laughs> I don't know what that show is. <laughs> well, look, Hel Helen Scheller from Vanilla got to watch TV, which is what Helen Keller from the past didn't get to. I can't yeah. run <laughs> No, that was good. I liked it. I tried. <laughs> <laughs> and it's time to draw, I'll draw a dick. Yeah. Oh, Jesus, look at that dick. I oh, know, it's a big pee hole. It's terrifying. <laughs> It's looking you right at try me. Try new things, man. You gotta. You can't just draw just dicks. You gotta. You gotta. You are just drawing dicks, though. <laughs> just, just drawing dicks. This one's got sunglasses on it. It's very cool. Yeah, that yeah. rigorous prosecution is why I hired him. <laughs> Good job again. He was just drawing dicks. Uh, exhibit A, Your Honour. <laughs> James, have, have you, <laughs> the dicks. Uh, wait, have, you, have you ever drawn something and then and then just thought maybe I'll, I'll push the limit too far? Maybe. I saw the microphone, like because it's here. I thought I could have a guitar. <laughs> Play that. Oh Is wait. That good? Is that... wait. Wait, wait, wait. That's comedy, <laughs> right? Thank you. I can't zoom in on the little. 
Oh, oh nice. <laughs> baby, please don't go. Anyway, welcome back to Studio 10, um, <laughs> <laughs> where he was still Saunders again. And our next letter, Ida, is Tennis Cops Serve, which is not the most inventive title from the Green Guide Better Writers. Tennis cops it in the Green Guide more so than Dr. Blake, I reckon. People are complaining about the fucking tennis. I mean, they're not even doing ten weeks. Like, yeah. it's just like <laughs> over in two weeks. Yeah. Just calm down. Yeah. I, I ignored the Olympics really well. I didn't have to write a letter at all. <laughs> I just ignored it. Do you reckon there's anyone who's watching the tennis going, I don't want to watch the tennis, but I want to know when my kitchen rules comes on. <laughs> <laughs> Why won't they tell me? <laughs> Did you draw a series of Olympic dicks? No, but I will. No, because it'd be around. Right, here we go. It'd be the other way, wouldn't it? The Olympic ribbon, rings. The ribbon yeah, yeah. I'm thinking about. All right. So it goes really big. Okay, here we go. This is a riveting podcast. <laughs> <by> <laughs> the <way. laughs> there we go. It's a ribbon dick. Do you know how they toss the ribbon and they? Oh yeah. All right. So and that's yeah. Okay. And they make <laughs> so you stretch it out and you have a really. Beautiful. It would be really beautiful. I mean, it shows how much you love the Olympics that the first Olympic sport you thought of was <laughs> rhythmic <a> gymnastics. <laughs> That's the only one that I miss. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's so beautiful. I would that like... would be an amazing Olympic sport, though. If it was like Olympic puppetry of the penis. Yeah. And there was a guy out there sort of swilling, like doing expressive dance with his dick out in a field. Mm. Oh, no. What if Australia gets the Olympics again? Say Adelaide bids for the Olympics, right? Adelaide <laughs> decides. <laughs> Adelaide's like, we're going to get the Olympics and we're going to do them in February and March. Fuck it. <laughs> Don't have enough stuff on yet. We're also bidding for the Olympics in Mad March. That's what we're doing. We're putting the Olympics in as well. <laughs> You'll be able to go see Will Anderson and then some volleyball in the same tent. <laughs> I'd love to see the Clipsal on the same as the walk. <laughs> just make it more exciting, walk. right? Yeah. Record fucking times if they have to dodge cars. Like <laughs> Record fatalities. I mean, it makes it fun for everybody. I'm just saying, <laughs> combine it a little. So, say Adelaide bid for it. They, they, you could get Papu Drew the Penis to kind of in a nice silhouette way, in a classy way, like kind of recreate... All the sports, Why like you know, but are you saying this isn't classy? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that would be used as the backdrop, obviously. <laughs> Maybe draw a dick with a tie or something like that. Oh, that's a great idea. <laughs> I mean, I guess that's all right, Saunders. <laughs> so, you, you, you say that I was hard to put up with, but when I drive off tonight, you'll be, yeah. Ooh, I'll be, I'll be <laughs> please don't go. <laughs> Totally naked in my studio. Because yeah. I haven't been That's able why you're to do that for a whole week. <laughs> totally naked in your studio, yeah, drawing I hope pictures you didn't smell of my William chair. Anderson. And, uh, you know, there'd be one person to be really mad. There'd be the pictures of my dick and then there'd be some angry guy just going, well, where's Ronnie Corbett's dick? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a big dick from him and a big dick from him. <laughs> Uh, Where's Ronnie Corbett's dick? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I didn't, I didn't realise this would be so dick themed, but I guess when I started and bought out a dick picture and then started just drawing dicks, I guess we got a dick show on our hands. <laughs> <laughs> a dick show. On our hands. This is like fucking Tinder before phones. <laughs> Just guys, pictures of dicks. I'm not even on Tinder and I've got so many dick pics on Twitter. It's <laughs> great. I did, this, I did this thing one day. This is what you have to like... do if you're Amish. You just have to bring around a picture of your dick and go, there it is. Sorry, I can't use the internet. It's against our rules. Here's a picture of my dick. I drew it it's myself. It's a lino cut. Yeah. But I, um, I did this thing one day. Because, I can uh, erect barns in this. Sorry. <laughs> I went back for one more. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, I, um, I did this thing one day because, you know, people, people have different ideas about how expensive you are and I'm, I'm sure there's, a, there's one person up on this stage that has a good idea. Um, but <laughs> It's not me. I, I, <laughs> I did, you I, fucking tell him to make one lightsaber green. <laughs> <laughs> I'm such a bitch. But I, I um, yeah, I... I did this thing where I was just like, all right, for the next 10 minutes on Twitter, free art, free art for everyone. Like, you've just got to request it. But everything I'd send back 
was what they requested, but it was a dick. Like, <laughs> and, it, and it was just getting all these people, and then it stopped. It, like, the last few was Michelle Laurie wanting a portrait. And I was oh, just like, God. I can't. All right, I've just got to draw her as a tasteful dick doing, like, a <laughs> namaste with, with her hair, I guess. And that'll be okay. And then the next guy's like, could you draw my three-year-old daughter? Oh. <laughs> So I kind of drew a dress with just dicks coming out of it. <laughs> I don't think she saw it, but I just. I, I, by the way, uh, I I, and I'll just go to my co-counsel. Is I don't think she saw an illegal defence. <laughs> I don't. You still. Oh my god. <laughs> I like that you didn't even reconsider at any point. You're like, oh, how am I going to do this one? I was just like, well, you <laughs> Not me, just me don't do it. <laughs> you throw me a curveball and I guess I better draw a three-year-old girl's dick person. You can pretend you didn't see the tweet. <laughs> You're like, I've got to do it. <laughs> I could have, I guess. I guess like... <laughs> and that's why we think we're the best team to represent you in this case. <laughs> I, you should have just blocked him. And then if you ever met him, why'd you block me? It's like, oh, it was either that or three to five years yeah. in prison. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I got called a pedophile on Twitter once. What, hey? What? <laughs> no, it was like an ABC Stooge pedophile with a Twitter account. And I just went, I'm on Facebook and Instagram as well. <laughs> but it was just like, I have no idea why he decided to call me that. I have an idea. <laughs> <laughs> just click. <laughs> I really do need you guys to represent <laughs> <laughs> I like to think that you're sweating just because you're in the presence of so many big pictures. <laughs> you're getting a bit hot under the collar. <laughs> well, you've, you've drawn some, like, political stuff. Like, you... Yeah. So, I've like Tony Abbott's dick. <laughs> <laughs> he had, he had the, the... Like, his knob was Rupert Murdoch's face and his... Balls with Gina Reinhardt, or was it the other way around? His knob was Gina Reinhardt's face, and his balls were Rupert Murdoch's face. Uh. It was very clever. <laughs> <laughs> Peter Peter Drum loved it. He was like, uh. <laughs> "I've got to stop." <laughs> Tennis cops are served. <laughs> Oh, shit, right. <laughs> Sorry, I did forget. I enjoyed the tennis TV broadcast for the fortnight, but as an ABC TV viewer... Is that more important than as a mother? <laughs> Survey says yes. I was surprised by the juvenile, contrived and repetitious nature of the commercials. The gulf between the talent of the players and the banality of their themes was marked. Graham Lee in Fitzroy. So that poses the question, should the level of sports play in the program mm. be reflected in the advertisements between? Is it, is, should they correlate? I mean, I guess that's a really interesting question, isn't it, Steele? If... <laughs> <laughs> James, over to you. I drew a dick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I think, obviously, I think they need to time them more with the players' personalities to really respond. So if you've got a game with Roger Federer in it, who's known as being like a trustworthy brand, clearly you've got to associate products that are like, you know, that people who are tuning in to watch Roger, Roger Federer play. But if it's Nick Kyrgios, who's known for being a bit wild and crazy... Um, and I'll explain this in more detail because I know you love sports, sports chat on this podcast. <laughs> oh, no, field, every so. time you add extra detail, I'm like, thank fuck. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah you could match it to... Um, oh, hang on. Sorry, I should stop talking about this because uh, apparently Peter Drum hates me talking about fucking advertising <laughs> <laughs> and dissecting it. And I don't want to ruin this podcast for him like I've ruined the fucking ABC. Harden up, mate. Anyway, I've got a bit angry about it in retrospect. <laughs> I... Uh... <laughs> Wasn't angry at the time, but it's burned away in me. <laughs> and now that I hear the words that are coming out of my mouth, I feel like I'm bringing it up a bit too often. I am beating that drum, if you will, Triple J. Yes. Uh, so, uh, 
Good plug, Ando. Getting back the kids. You're so, having, did I say that out loud or just in my head? Let's move on. <laughs> you're having the terrible Tuesdays of Green Guide letters. It's like <laughs> two letters ago, it kicks in, and you're yeah. just like, fuck, I need some Changi. <laughs> <laughs> Changi does sound like it's slang for something you could get on the street in Adelaide. <laughs> You'd be like, mate, you got any coke? No. Mate, you got any MDMA? mate? No. I've got some Changi. You'd be like, oh, fuck it, it's the last weekend. <laughs> I, uh... It's just a really good sausage roll. <laughs> We've got another sweet tennis letter. Just before we get that, can I um, ask something about the sausage roll reference? Um, not about the reference itself, but... I, it just occurred to me because you know in Adelaide fa- you're famous for the you know the pea f- the pea, the pie in pie the floater. the pie floater and it's in yeah. the pea is it in peas? A pie's in a pie in a pea soup, I think. It's a pie. I had one the other day for the first time. Uh, it's a pie in a bowl, and then they put mushy peas on top of it, and then vinegar and, mm. and tomato sauce. Oh, that sounds like a reconstructed one. I reckon it used to just be <laughs> a pie in some peas or something. But did you was there ever no a sausage? Bowl. Was there ever a sausage roll version, or was it exclusively pies? I've never heard of a sausage roll version. Just fucking pies. Is that, that seems to me like a weird, like, like not one person went, oh, it's good with the pie, but fuck, it'll be terrible with a sausage roll. <laughs> That'd be stupid. Who's, who's oh, look at him, adding... he's having a sausage roll flight. I want a fucking... Who would have thought that adding mushy peas to anything just makes it a fucking perfect dish? It sounds like a prank. I know. I don't like it. I've never had one. <laughs> Never Get some gravy one. up on that shit. I've had a frog cake, though, and that's just a cake shaped like a frog. <laughs> I don't want to ruin it. It's not a real frog. <laughs> and you just sadly ate it just like, yeah. could have been dick shaped. This isn't a real frog. <laughs> I mean, it's lucky you have fruit chocks because when your number one and number two choices of culinary things the world knows about is peas on your pie that no one else in the world ever does <laughs> and a cake that looks like a frog. <laughs> And that's it. Have a yeah. Farmers Union iced coffee and shut the fuck up, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, well, that, the last tennis one, tennis cops are served, not that okay. good, right? No, but, no. But, but this title is pretty good. So I'll, I'll, I'll read the letter and then you can guess what the, uh, the title might be. Okay, great. Okay. Little game. The Australian Open, a chance to be reminded of the welter of programmed rubbish on commercial television. And that letter was from Lance Williams... Oh, this has to be a fucking made-up name. Is this up, up it pot pon? Up it pot pon. Is that a real town, Will? I, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it looks like the racist name Chris Lilly would call one of his characters. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it looks like. I feel like somebody just stopped trying at the end. Just like, ah! <laughs> All right. Well, apologies to the people in up top, top, top. You try to say that one. You, you, up, up, uh, a pop. <laughs> you potty, you potty pot pon. You potty pot pon. Oh, yeah. Actually, that's pretty good. You potty pot pon. That sounds charming. Oh, <laughs> when you say it. Yeah. I'm trying to think of a you potty pot pun. But, uh, <laughs> no, I said the genius was that was one. So fuck you all. <laughs> <laughs> the layers. <laughs> <laughs> like a frog cake. <laughs> like a Fosdyke foreskin. <laughs> foreskin? I think I've been a bit... I've been a bit circumcised here. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Steele. <laughs> Good feedback. Good feedback. Yeah. <laughs> I should do a Star Wars one, shouldn't I? No. Yeah, all right. Star Wars dick. <laughs> All right, Chewbacca. <laughs> it's going to be hairy. <laughs> <laughs> be great if it made that noise when you came, yeah. though. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, wrong podcast for this quality material. <laughs> no, wrong podcast for any type of material. <laughs> yeah, it's... I know, I know. You, you, I guess I shouldn't joke about Louis coming on a Wookiee. You know how hard it is to get cum out of your cat. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> Sorry, I went dark to save myself. I was in a hole. I was in a hole. I saw a joke going by and I just thought, fuck it, that one will do. That one will do. (laughs) Sorry, sorry. That was too much. By the way, I wasn't implying that you were having sex with Jerry. I was implying that you were just masturbating and Jerry walked by and some got on. 
Jerry, but I was still implying that your cum was on your cap. But, I, <laughs> but in an accidental way, not an intentional way, it was what I was trying to say. Because Jerry, I thought, I thought you were actually like still was trying to jerk off Jerry to get his semen so he could make more Jerry's in the future. Like, so you could freeze it cryogenically. Freeze it. Oh my God. <laughs> Do you want more Jerry's? I mean, there's how many years has he got left? Oh no, oh God. <laughs> No, I guess, like, ten now. Oh, come ten on. Now. now we won't be able to masturbate tonight. <laughs> I mean, he's been punched in the face so many times. That's got to take the years off. Anyway, I've nearly finished this Chewbacca dick. I've got his, his little satchel with his... Was it the, is that ammunition for his little gun on, on, that he wears on his... Is that little arrow gun that he shoots? Go fuck yourself, Foster. <laughs> <laughs> the freedom Tonight, of, when the studio is free, of I've been thing has for gone it. too far. <laughs> we need to lock this shit down. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking, what is wrong with you, Will? <laughs> Get off the Will pill. I <laughs> know oh, I enjoyed it in the end. <laughs> so Sorry, what was the name of the letter? This has become a little changey for you. <laughs> 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 Because oh, let's just fucking sit around and draw some dicks then. <laughs> let's get attached to them. I'm not attached. I'm going to just throw this out like it's nothing. <laughs> like, just you wait. I could just... No, I couldn't tear it up, but... There's Chewbacca's... Chewbacca's dick. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was that, worth the wait. That's, that's, that's that is better, better than the first three prequels. <laughs> That is my... I'm not taking that bait. Um, <laughs> that's not... It's less so Chewbacca's dick and more a dick cosplaying as Chewbacca. That's a good idea, isn't it? Do, do any people do that at the conventions? No. They just, they just, just look like a normal dick. person and it's just like, I'm actually Chewbacca. No, you don't look a bit like Chewbacca. Zip. <laughs> <laughs> No, you're not allowed to do that at conventions anymore because oh. of a thing they would have brought in called Fosdyke's Law. <laughs> <laughs> oh, were we going to guess the... We were going to <laughs> before <laughs> fucking Sorry. Fosdyke made me cry. <laughs> Who gives I'm sorry about the letters now. I, I'm also <laughs> sorry about cats. the Jerry thing. You know that I respect cats and I know that that was a bad joke to make and I don't know why I would have lashed out at you when you invite me on your podcast to read out critiques of my work. <laughs> so I uh, <laughs> got no idea where that uh, pain, emotional abuse would have come from. But um, <laughs> So what was the name of that letter? <laughs> <laughs> And that one was titled <laughs> Fosdyke's a Cunt. So, um, <laughs> was it a True. tennis pun about ads or something? Is that what it was? Was it in that zone? Was that the kind of vibe of it? Tell yeah. us what the letter was called. Racket Abuse. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. So much tennis. Oh, but it's only for two weeks. So you've got to get your tennis <laughs> letters in. That's the thing. It's got a yeah. fortnight. You've got to get complaints about the tennis. Right, so and you can have some of them pre written. Like they're playing too many ads, the commentators are idiots. Like, you can really start working on them, say, after Christmas, maybe New Year's. Like, you know, you're on summer holidays. It's like January 2 or 3. Haven't got much work to go, but you want to get a letter into the green guy. That's your prime time <laughs> to really get the letter structure done so you can just send it out immediately when the tennis starts. Too many ads! Oh, I got him first. Got him. <laughs> Jim Curry is a dickhead. He's not an Australian. That sounds a bit racist. I, uh... <laughs> Do you think they're training all year? Oh, yeah, mate. Yeah, like the players. <laughs> They probably actually do tournaments around the world. They probably travel to the big four majors <laughs> <laughs> and they write their letters. Wimbledon isn't as good as it used to be. Who's the top seed tennis letter writer, you reckon? Oh. Oh. Helen <laughs> Scheller of Vanilla. How about this one? This one is titled Double Standards. Is this one a tennis one as well? <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Very good. <laughs> I expect that it makes perfect sense to some people that a marriage between two people of the same sex cheapens and demeans the sacred institute of marriage. But a TV show like Married at First Sight doesn't. And that is a very on-point letter from Gary Sayer in Warner Ball. I mean, not just Gary Sayer, though, right? Gary Reiner proved it himself. <laughs> 
Fucking as actions to back up his words. They always used to say of his dad, because you're always named after what your parents originally do. Yeah, yeah. And the sayers, they were big people who would talk it up, but they would never follow through. But when Gary was born, he was like, no fucking way. <laughs> if I have an opinion about both society and television that I can combine into a witty letter, I'm going to fucking write it, not just say it. And now he's done it, and the sayers can die happy. That's the story behind it. I researched it. Now... <laughs> Fosdike, you like to diss on every letter writer, so I'd just like you to... They're a cunt. (laughs) Who? Wait. Say the letter. Was it that letter? (laughs) There was a guy coming out in favour of same-sex marriage. Um, Oh. And and, and, and before you answer, can I get you a Coopers? (laughs) Wait a minute. Are we pro or anti? I'm not sure. That Coopers thing drives me fucking crazy because if you drink enough Coopers, you'll fuck anyone. (laughs) (laughs) So they've got that little ad in the... the Oh, I can't even remember it, but it's just like our family, our brand is consistency and stuff, where it's just like half of us will be anti-gay marriage and the other half will go, uh, we're not gay marriage and we're reading from this thing to say, please buy our beer again because we're really scared. You know, it's... I, I, I'm not homophobic. <laughs> <laughs> Your Honour. Uh, now, uh, our legal advice is you sounded convincing until that last bit. <laughs> It sounded <laughs> like you checked the back of your head. I'm not <laughs> homophobic. <laughs> but that guy's uh, a all, cunt. All that feedback is if at the end of your sentences you could not trail off and sound guilty, that would be really great. I'll do my best. I do like that you also have that mic stand, so you always look like you're, that you're on trial at the yeah. same time. <laughs> and you're sweating and you're like, oh, no, I'm not homophobic. <laughs> this is like the greatest <laughs> sketch of all time because the courtroom artist is actually on trial. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight on the highlights of Saturday Night Live, John Lovitz's his greatest ever sketch as he plays the courtroom artist who's on trial. But what if all the people in the courtroom did look like this? <laughs> 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 It'd be great to see the news report and they're just talking about the crime or whatever, the court case, and you just see this little little court sketch pop up and it's just a dick coming out of a suit. <laughs> That's why I go to court. <laughs> <laughs> Or, or they get a, the courtroom artist in, you just have to fill in for one day. But that's all you can do. Yeah. You can, like, I can draw the people, but they will all look like they dicks. They will all look like dicks. Even Michelle Laurie, if she asks nicely. I'll do another a classic one to, uh, that might... Um, I'm interested in this one. This could bring up some good topics. That It mentions... It mentions you. It mentions you in a way that people... No, no, but... Is why there is, why is there none of it yet? Who, who yeah, does it mention? Yeah, does it yeah, mention yeah, me or Pete or Will? Is it mentioning Will? William. It oh, mentions Will. Right. <laughs> Sorry. Is it, like, this is so fucking biased. There's not been not one Pete letter. Not one. <laughs> why? May I please have a water, William? Yes. Thank you. Oh, shit. <laughs> Apparently I'm not much good at pouring it, though. But it's in a Cooper's uh, labelled... Plastic cup, so mm, just good to have a good old chat and chin wag over a Cooper's water. <laughs> <laughs> mm. It's just good we can all disagree on things, you know. Yeah. And just yeah. in a, it's just nice a conversation. Way. As long as we all agree that guys <laughs> can't get mad. <laughs> yeah. it's, a, it's a discussion we need to have. Yeah, just a discussion yeah. we need to have. Okay, this is from November 19, 2015. This one's about. Remember when you talked about this on Gruen because it mentions this in the letter. Okay. But um, when Michelle Bridges, one of the, um, she's one of the biggest losers, I yep. believe. I know who she is because I saw her and her uh, boyfriend, husband, partner, not sure, father of her baby, Commando, Steve's the Commando, at the um, airport the other day. And uh, we, it was early in the morning and uh, I was travelling out of a place I'd been for a week and uh, I got to the end of the week and I had some of my medicine left over and I have the sort of medicine... I know that, what you mean. Oh, the, yeah, the sort of medicine that you're not allowed to take on planes. So um, I decided that I, the best way to get rid of that would be to try to take it all at once. <laughs> Is and, your medicine a Samsung phone? Yeah, so, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Well done, Steele, I like it. Um, so, <laughs> anyway, uh, so I was really stoned at the airport in the morning and it was like, you know, the toasted sandwich buffet... 
like bit of the Qantas <laughs> lounge and Commando and fucking Michelle Bridges were there and they were all eating like the fruit and the salad and oh. shit. So I was just like, fuck this shit. <laughs> I'm like going to make that a most unhealthy thing and just keep walking by them and like... <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was like putting cheese sandwiches inside other cheese sandwiches and just going, this is how you... Anyway, anyway, they're really fit and I'm not, so... But at least you're keeping your steps up walking past. Yeah, it's a good That's point. That's good help. No, <laughs> thank you, mate. So uh, she did this weird Woolworths commercial where she sort of made fun of people that grew their own food. I'm not sure if everyone oh, yeah. remembers that. She's sort of dressed up like a hippie. It says, like everyone, I grow my own vegetables. Isn't that right, darlings? Well, she says, well, just drink to the plants. And then she comes out all clean in sort of like an Ikea kitchen, she goes, it's time to get real. Eating healthier doesn't mean you have to act like a freak. Right? And this did not go down very well. So we got this letter. Not clever. <laughs> Gruen and the Chasers Media Circus told us about this stupid ad. Michelle Bridges and Woolworths apologised for it. They were... <laughs> Exoriated. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a tough that word. Is. That's a tough <laughs> word. Sounds like I feel like also now I was like your version of spell check on your computer. <laughs> <laughs> like where you just clicked on it and I was dictionary.com. I was like, what does that word mean? And I'm exoriated. <laughs> they were exoriated! <laughs> well pronounced. <laughs> on social media for it, but the fact remains some knucklehead thought it was a clever ad and persuaded another knucklehead to start in it. And that is from Ken Dunstan Lockington. Now, this is what I want to know. Will, have you ever had a knucklehead suggest you do something in the media? What bullets have you dodged? Uh, I, I don't know if I've ever had much uh, like one-on-one -on -one sort of interaction with knuckleheads. Um, quite a lot of fuck knuckleheads, to be honest, <laughs> I would say, but rather not knuckleheads. Um, I like the argument, though. This one I always love, and you hear it a lot on Gruen as well, is like, oh, well, at least it got the publicity, or at least even if it's terrible that the justification is. So their one is just like, oh, yeah, I mean, it's terrible, and everyone agrees it's terrible, but someone agreed to do it. Yeah, we know that, mate. That's why we saw the fucking ad on the TV. Like, that's literally what you've just described. Like, there wouldn't be complaints about things that... I mean, it'd be really fucking petty if people were writing to the Green Guide to complain about things that hadn't actually happened, right? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I heard about oh, a meeting. Oh, well, imagine if Michelle Bridges dressed it up like a hippie and to promote food and made fun of hippies. That would be outrageous. Imaginary Green Guide letters. <laughs> What about you, James? I mean, I get it all the time. I had this, I had this job. I don't know if this really relates, but it, it, <laughs> it's the ad, the ad speak. You know, the ad agency kind of calling you up, and it was for, you know, it was for a, a blocked nose medication, and their their campaign. I'm probably talking out of school, but it's called the Schnoz, right? Schno so they're what? Hang this, on, Schnoz. The Schnoz, and they're going to have this big, <laughs> like. Can, can I just say, it's so, it's so weird to have someone say blocked nose medication and not like coyly tap like their nose. Like, <laughs> it's, a, it's the first time that anybody's used that and it hasn't been code on your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but it was like the big elephant, ele like the proboscis monkey, they were using that, but it just looked hideous. And they wanted me to do some concepts around like what a blocked nose would be like. And this conference call took fucking 20 minutes. And they're like, you know the differences between a blocked nose and a runny nose? And it's just sort of like, I, I, I do. I've had a blocked nose and I've had a runny nose. Like, <laughs> I've, also, I've also had yeah. a running drain and a blocked drain. And yeah. again, and I could want, extrapolate we, about the nose from that real life scenario. We want this nose. It's blocked. It's not runny. Yeah. And we want it to have a personality. And okay. We want it to be not too pink. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, I'm drawing it in black and white. And they're like, but not too pink. And I'm like, <laughs> all right. Okay. I reckon you nailed like, it. And so I had to draw like eight different block noses um, on this one face. And at the end of the call, I'm like, so with the face, what do you want that to look like? Do you want it to be an old guy or a girl? Or a and they were just like, oh, oh, we haven't, haven't thought of that. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, well, it's just the actual, not the nose part of your campaign of this one picture of just a face with a nose on it. And it's just like, but they're telling me, they spent 10 minutes telling me about the difference between a blocked nose and a fucking runny nose. 
something I already know. And you're just going to draw a dick anyway, so it didn't even matter. <laughs> <laughs> I had to not look yeah. like... That was specific. That was in the briefing call. Not look like a dick. That, that ad agency had gotten onto me from the dollop, so they were specific. They were like, no dicks. Like, you know, it's going to be a block nose. But well, I, I didn't like want to bring this up before, but the great thing about working with James is occasionally he'll put, uh, like, secret dicks into our TOEFOP posters. <laughs> but he had done it so often that there was one instance, and I can't remember which poster it was, but where you hadn't actually actually intentionally put a dick accidental. in, but there was an accidental giant fucking dick in there anyway. It was such a dick. Like, and if, if, you look on the, if you look on your uh, profile page, like where you've got Charlie, the Tofop one, where you've got the hands linked holding the microphone, Charlie's like, could you take the dick hole out of that microphone? And I'm like, it's not a dick hole. You just think everything, oh, it's a dick hole. <laughs> <laughs> So it does. It has creeped into the subconscious, and I've just got to be really, really careful when I'm when I'm doing jobs for people that I don't know too well. Yeah, and also, uh, do you know the difference between a block dick and a runny dick? <laughs> <laughs> I've had a block dick, and I have had a runny dick. I can say that my cat does not know the difference because <laughs> he's not aware of the human penis. I um... or his own mortality. <laughs> and I won't say which one's longer because that would be mean and I'm not being mean to you anymore in this podcast it's good to have friends isn't it still <laughs> friends are fun right still, death comes for us all <laughs> What a great green guy letter that is. <laughs> <laughs> Just finishes with them all cats. <laughs> this thing <laughs> comes to us all. I'm, 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 like, I'm coming to terms with my cat's morality. Death comes to us all. And I'm looking down with my hand... Like in my hair, just like dealing with it. And then this is like what I'm staring at. Just <laughs> It's like death cannot come soon enough. Wait until you see this one. Yeah, get a little of that show one. Show you little Let sketches. Let me just add the finishing touches. <laughs> all right, there we go. All right. Am I getting invoiced for all this stuff? Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Can you describe that, William? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't. In it's fact, just, there's, it's still, it's all right, for the people at home, it's, it's still <laughs> relaxing on his chair, doing his live green guide. There's his microphone there. There's his other hand on his leg. And he's just got... <laughs> let me just finish. It. He's just got his jeans open a bit. Like open? Just, just it's not flopped out, you see. Right. It's still tucked in. Yeah. Oh. It's just a hint of dick. It's just... I guess it's, yeah. Pubes. Yeah, some more pubes. <laughs> yeah, I reckon it's finished still. Do you want this or do you want to give it to one of your listeners? Would anyone like that picture? I... I hope they don't. Who <laughs> wants it? What I love is right now there is <laughs> someone who wants it but does not want to say it. In front of <laughs> There's most definitely, if you leave that on the table, somebody will sneak up and say hello and fucking take that. But right now they're like not in front of people. No. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be left on the table. Trust me. <laughs> oh, God. Where are you, Pete? Have you ever dodged a bullet? Actually, you, you were doing stand up in the mall before. Yeah, I was. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. How did that work out? Well, uh, the, I've done it. Uh, four times so far. Is this, there a stage? There's, a, there's stage. a stage. There's a stage, and there's some seats. But the last time I did it, there was uh, right as it was about to start. Right as we were about to start doing stand up, uh, this uh, group of break dancers started just off to the side. Ooh, a rival game. And everybody <laughs> left to go see the break dancers. And the seven people who stayed to watch me do stand up comedy were just kind of like the whole time watching me, but <laughs> looking over at the break dancers, <laughs> <laughs> who were way better. <laughs> I wanted to go see the break dancers. <laughs> so if you ever want to heckle a comedian, take a posse. <laughs> a rap yeah. mat and a posse. That's yeah, all you need. Yeah, do. and a boom box. Just do that. <laughs> well, funnily enough, I did a moonwalk uh, this morning for your son, George. George and yeah. fucking he would have no interest in your comedy after that. He was... Oh, you, what? A you, moonwalk. He moonwalks for my boy, and my boy found it amusing, and that's all you have to do. To <laughs> yeah, dancing. Everybody so loves dancing. <laughs> children's entertaining, maybe. I, I don't know. Yeah, no, it's good. You really know that three-year-old uh, audience still. They're real payers, so... <laughs> <laughs> Guess you won't be getting a raise for your steel posters. <laughs> 
Oh, I went back to being me. I didn't mean it. He's given me a raise in that picture. <laughs> no, it's oh, no, that's in, like, mate. yeah, that's if half a raise. If it was raised, it would be poking out yeah, and it would true. be, you know, it'd have a bit of a wave to it. <laughs> I know how to draw, you think I know how to draw dicks and how the, the, the life cycle of the dick and how it changes shape and it's just, it's malleable. It's like a piece of plasticine. Artistically, you know, it's like clay. You can mould it into different, anyway. Another letter. <laughs> Welcome to Inside Dicks, <laughs> a show where we go in, in down the hole. Down the hole. <laughs> Could you rehearse that dick monologue? <laughs> Every night. <laughs> Every night in the mirror, like a speech from a few good men. <laughs> you want dicks? You can't handle the dicks. Please thank our guest, James Fosdyke. Peter the Jones and Will Nice Guy Anderson. Sorry, Steele. Right. Always love the podcast. Always happy to get the feedback. And that, still, that... I don't I don't have a really good idea of how to do live comedy, and what I've gathered is to just give the host shit. And that was my kind of strategy going in. I, I really enjoyed like you staying with us, and and I had a great time. Yeah, You're and welcome. you know what? He, <laughs> he actually came over to like to my place yesterday, and we caught up all the day before. And uh, he said that actually, without even he said actually it was lovely having you there, and he enjoyed having you there, and you're actually a really really nice guy. And he said he'd seen your cat, and it looked really healthy. Thank you. <laughs> now. Well, it turns <laughs> out, surprise everyone, Pete Jones is the cunt of this podcast. Fuck! Don't, don't. Kaiser Stolze. <laughs> James, um, where can the good people of the internet find your cock drawings? Well, only on Twitter. I'm exclusive to Twitter with the Cox. You signed really. an agreement. Yeah, I, I talked to Tim, what's his name, the leader of Twitter and stuff, and I just said, you know, I don't like Trump being on here, but if you're going to let me just keep this exclusive for dicks, I'll, I won't get upset about it. And, and so that's where you find me, James Fosdyke there. James Fosdyke on Facebook's more restrained and, and like I'm a proper illustrator and stuff. And Instagram's just stupid photos. Peter Jones? Uh, Instagram at the Peter the Jones and on Twitter at Peter the Jones. <laughs> it is a common name. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you got shows in the Comedy Festival? Oh, yeah, uh, yes, doing a show at the Comedy Festival called Three Course Comedy, which is a split show running throughout the entire festival. And yep. who is that with? Uh, Michael Schaefer and a variety of guests throughout the run. Nice. Will Anderson, do you have any comedy performances coming up around the country? Uh, yeah, my Critically Will tour is on sale all around the country. I've already done Canberra and Adelaide at this point, but uh, Brisbane, Melbourne, Sydney, Wollongong, Darwin, Perth, and I think New we're about to add Newcastle and a few other dates as well, so there's heaps... Heaps of that. Are you hitting Wadonga Ding Dong Ding Dong Blum? <laughs> oh, look, I'll, I'll, I'll Google it. I'll put it on the list. I'll see how we go. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm going all over the country. And obviously, I've got a bunch of other podcasts that people can check out um, on the internet. Nice. I saw the show the other night and I loved it. I had a really oh, good time. Oh, thank you. Thank you guys so much for coming out. It is a real treat to come to Adelaide and, and have a nice full room every Saturday of the, of the fest. I really appreciate it. So give yourselves a round of applause, Adelaide. I love you guys. Thank our guests. I am Steel Saunders and I do love those green guys letters. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that really funny I Love Green Guy Letters with Pete Jones, Will Anderson, and James Fosdyke. Well, I certainly hope you enjoyed it. More than I did, because everyone was really mean to me, you guys. It just, just wasn't nice. And all those penises scared the crap out of me. The best of times. Thank you so much uh, to all the Adelaide letter lovers. I really appreciate it. It is business time in the comedy year. It is Comedy Festival. It starts this week. I would love 
to see you at the stand-up show. Steel Saunders, The Enthusiast. It is 7 p.m. at Fort Delta, Tuesdays to Saturdays for the first two weeks only. And then I'm jetting off to America for a week and a half on a bit of a secret project, which should be uh, awesome. And uh, then I'll be back for the final weekend of podcast. I love Green Guide Letters. We are on Thursday nights, 11 p.m. at the Exford, upstairs on the 30th of March, on the 6th of April, and on the 20th of April. The traditional Saturday afternoon live podcasts on the 1st of April, the 8th of April, and the 22nd of April, and that will be at the Joint. So Saturday afternoons at the Joint, Thursday nights, at the Exford Upstairs. It's going to be the best of times. Six shows, no action on Easter weekend as I will be in America. And would love to see you there lining up some hilarious comedians, some special guests. And before the Saturday afternoon ones, we'll have a live Steel Wars as well. And you can get season passes if you just want to go to all the Saturdays, all the Thursdays, or all of them. Or you can get the Smorgasbord Pass, which gets you all the Steel Warses, three of them, six I Love Gringo Letters, and a ticket to Steel Saunders the Enthusiast. And I think you save about 75 bucks if you go for that one. But I make all the package deals cheaper. You get a show free or whatever, because I appreciate you guys coming and uh, want to make it so you can come to them all. That would be dope. But uh, I would love to see you at Steel Saunders, the Enthusiast. There's only uh, the first two weeks and uh, no, just Tuesdays to Saturdays. I may have mentioned that already. It's kind of late and it's pre-comedy festival and I hope people come. I hope you guys come. It's going to be awesome. I, I can tell I can tell a good riddle, you guys. I, uh, I say a sentence and at the end, people laugh, apparently. That's how it works going to be great. It's all about all the things I love. Uh, There's some fun Seinfeld stories. There's some fun cat stories. And uh, there's some pretty amazing Star Wars stories as well of adventures I've been on. A lot of them, I'm probably meaner to myself than those guys were in that podcast. No, that probably would not be possible. But uh, come along. I so appreciate your support. If you're around Australia or the world and you can't make it, uh, drop this episode a retweet. That would be awesome. Or grab the iTunes. I don't know. Grab something that has iTunes on it. Open that up. Log in. You probably already logged in already and write us a sweet five-star review. That would be super awesome appreciated um, my other podcast Steel Wars is uh, got live episodes going on as well so if you have live podcasts and uh, you've ran out of podcasts go check them out we did a really funny one that just went up with Demi Lardner this week and Luca Mueller and normally you guys love Demi's appearances on I Love Gringo Letters and she's as funny on the Steel Wars podcast the week before that We had uh, Dave Callan. He killed it as well with uh, comedian Dave Campbell. And you can get them on iTunes or wherever or SteelWars.com. Can't wait to see you guys at the Melbourne International Comedy Festival. I so appreciate your support. But now, what else is there to do? But go to that secret show. Uh, all your references from 10 years ago tonight, <laughs> you've turned into... Mr. Black. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just think artists should be able to draw as many penises as they want. That's right. I'll yeah. draw another one. <laughs> <laughs> That was a weird turn of phrase. <laughs> Coopers. <laughs> That's what it is. You drink out of the Coopers cup. And <laughs> I'm into it. 
Is that Yoda flashing? I I was really worried that you wouldn't un, like get who it was because I didn't have a picture of Yoda to look at. But it is Yoda flashing his dick. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I, if you are. And here's what I what still. Wearing sunglasses because he's cool, <laughs> and I didn't, I didn't fuck up the eyes at all. I just wanted to put some sunglasses <laughs> on. Foss, like, I think you might have a bit of a dick issue. I'm not sure if that character in Superbad. Oh, could you have a look at it actually? <laughs> 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 we went past this like, like a kiosky burger place before in Rundle Mall, and it's sponsored by Coopers, and it had like a burger logo. Is that what you saw? All right, continue. Tell them, tell them what you think it was. I thought it was a burger. It was like a, you know, kind of like a, a, you know, like a basic logo, like a toilet door. So it was had the two buns and then it had the meat in the middle. And it just looked like a burger place. What did you think it looked like, James? A big old hog and a couple of butt cheeks. Because like, <laughs> they're just trying to improve their brand now. They're like, let's go the whole hog. Is it the dick laying between it's the just, butt it's cheeks? Just, there's a couple of butt cheeks and it's just, it's just laying there. There's nothing sexual about it. It's just a place just mat. I mean, that wouldn't butt. surprise me because I went into a McDonald's for the first time in nine years the other day because I watched that movie, The Founder, which is about the foundation of McDonald's. And I'm like, I'm going to go back into a McDonald's. But I'm vegetarian. But now they just like... It's so fucking desperate in there. They're like, what do you want in your burger? Just put it in the fucking machine. You can put crazy shit in it. We don't know what we're doing anymore. <laughs> so if you just went in and went, I just want two like, fresh rolls and I want to put my dick in it, they go, six bucks, just do it. Just do it. We need your money. We're ashamed of it too, but just put your dick in the roll. That this is a, It can be brioche if you want. It can be brioche. We'll put the special sauce. You can put your own special sauce. We don't care. <laughs> I'm loving it. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. The McFoz. <laughs>or viewers, so. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing, when you do... Perfect strike. Right? Yeah. <laughs> when you do something on community television, you're like, I'd fucking just... I'd love for someone to complain. Oh, I'd love just a complaint. Anything, anything to let me know that someone watched. Yeah. No. Well, None. <laughs> not even from the crew. I'm not sure they were paying attention. Last, last year, like, you were staying with me, and we got home at, like, I think it was, like, 3 o'clock in the morning one night. <laughs> and sat up, sat at home, and getting a bit relaxed. Just had a bit of a relaxing time. Turn on the TV, and there's still Saunders on the TV. <laughs> you're really you're on the community TV on in Adelaide Television. And I was sitting there with Steel, and I loved it so much, I couldn't stop laughing because you were cringing like a motherfucker. You hated it. <laughs> and you were telling me to turn it off, and I just wouldn't because I was enjoying it too much. It was Is hard. anyone realising that I'm actually a, an asshole? <laughs> uh, Steel must be really desperate. I mean, as, as your lawyers, uh, <laughs> uh, we liked your recollection of the time. That was very accurate. Uh, the bit where you said you'd been relaxing, the cops will know you were talking about smoking oh, weed. On the Changies! <laughs> couple of Changies, and then we'll watch Steel on the Telly. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was brutal. You yeah. hated it. I loved it. What was it on? What were you doing? It was, stand up on? I think it was, it was just like a live Green Guide like Letters. You filmed Green Guide. Oh, yeah, they were yeah. filming and the men doing. Uh, why did you know? I mean, I hate. I never watch like myself back. It's it's really hard to do, and like for everybody. But what is it about you that you don't enjoy watching? Uh, what do you <laughs> that hate was asked. You, I, I you, hate you just looked at me like, is he? No, I'm trying to be nice to you now. <laughs> I'm trying to be nice to you now. I felt like I went too far before. If I was trying to be mean, when they said that Steel was watching and you didn't like it, I'd be like, oh, now you know how it's like to be one of your audience members. It would have been easy. It would have been easy for me to do it, but I let it go. <laughs> they have missed the opportunity to use the pun. If it ain't baroque, don't fix it. Though, so, <laughs> what is baroque? Oh, now we're oh, getting it's deep. It's like on some it. kind of French arty shit, right? <laughs> 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 <laughs>
He knows more about the arts than he leads on with his dick pics, but he actually has studied it. He knows what he's doing. You should see his fucking Baroque back mountain post too. It was hilarious. 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 <laughs> Reminded me of that scene in American Beauty where the guy's talking over the plastic Fucking bag. Fucking pie. Nope. That nope. American that's a different movie. <laughs> <laughs> with, his, with his dick. There's the pie, and then he just flops the dick in it. <laughs> and drop the dick in peas. <laughs> I'm so glad you came on this episode and not last <laughs> not week's. Because now I'm like kind of glad I'm getting away. <laughs> 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 All right. I mean, you, this gig has become like Oprah. You're just going to be handing out dicks to the audience. You, Everyone gets a dick. You get a dick. You get a dick. Oh. <laughs> it doesn't sound that great, does it? No. Oh. Does anyone drawn. have any requests of what they'd like me to draw? A frog cake A dick. dick. Did you say a dick over there? Yeah. All right. <laughs> I'll draw yeah. a dick. Some sort of dick. Yeah. Some sort of comical, comical dick. A pie, pie floated, floated dick. dick. Like this guy down the front. I said in a very fucking sensible fashion too. <laughs> just like really like sometimes when people contribute they make too much of it. But that was just like fucking pie floated dick, mate. Just put a right. fucking dick in a fucking pie. That's all I want to see. Dick in a pie. Dick in a pie. Maybe dick some peas around the fucking edge. Or maybe peas in the fucking pubes. Anyway, I'm not going to tell you what to do. <laughs> 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 it's... Uh... It's difficult because, you know, as you draw it, you feel it. And <laughs> I, yeah. I think oh my God. Having, God. having your dick in a hot pie in a pile of mushy peas, while it sounds nice, yeah. it wouldn't be nice. No. Nah. Well, right. you've got to use the peas to cool it down during the yeah. process. That's why the peas are there. I mean, obviously, the filling of the pie is going to be hot, but, you know, the peas, they're going to be your option to sort of cool down and kind of moderate the temperature, I'd imagine. Maybe some sauce. Maybe yeah. some tomato sauce. Yeah, put some, some sauce, sauce on sauce. it. That'll, <laughs> that'll, that'll on. calm it down a little, kind of. At least so when you first is go in, dick... it doesn't feel as hot, and then you'll get used to the temperature like when you go swimming. Is the dick head first into the pie or oh, popping it's, out it's of the pie? Is right it the pie's there. dick? It's, it's not... Let me finish. Oh. I thought it was coming out. I want to know now. No, I'm drawing but the dick going into the pie. Okay. Oh, Jason Big style. Yeah. Okay. But Back Australian, like Biggie South style, Australian. as I say, Big Z style. This is South Australian pie. It's going to be a great movie. <laughs> Jason Biggs. Who's South the Australian? Hot Jason pie. Biggs. Cozzy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's South Aussie with Cozzy. <laughs> what? God, the top of that dick's getting a bit fido and dido. And yeah, but what's really good is I don't have to decide whether I think Cozzy's circumcised or not because the dick's in the pie already, so you can't tell. Theatre of the mind. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Hey, Margaret, buy a fucking iPod. <laughs> <laughs>